1500 cc's uh, today we're going to be talking about the Mazda Miatas uh, still within the Japanese domestic market and still within our affordable performance car range and today it's going to be cars that go quick for under hundred thousand dollars because we all know the Miatas aren't very fast but we'll talk more about that later um, probably not going to have b-roll because we had the intro video so let's just go right into it so like I said we'll be talking about the Mazda Miatas today um, the MX-5 and uh, we know the Miatas aren't too fast, but we do know a lot of people consider them one of the best handling cars out there, which means they can still be quick around the track. So, go ahead. All right, so we start with their you know, 2017 Mazda, the MX-5. So the MX-5 comes in three, three models. So we'll have Sport, Club, and then Grand Touring. Um, so Sport is just the it's, it's just a standard Miata. It comes with a what's it? A double overhead cam engine. So what that means it's just two camshafts, one for intake and then one for exhaust, right? It's a two liter four cylinder, 150 horsepower, 148 foot pounds of torque car. So by any means, just by looking at the engine itself, it's it, it it's not fast. Okay, it's not really fast in a straight line. You know, as we Americans, we like cars that go really really fast but in a straight line. I mean, what, what a Mazda does is it opens up a different avenue of speed, so to speak. It may not be fast, but it is quick. So, like, these Mazdas are so light with these little quirky engines that around corners, you can gun as hard as you want, and it'll take the corner fine. So you have fun in the car. So that, that's what it is. So, obviously, this being a small engine, small car, MPG is amazing. So around average, what everyone's tested is around 35 highway, 26 city. Mazda promotes that and it's fairly true. On top of that, it comes with these little 16 inch aluminum alloy wheels, which are smaller than our previous episode of the 86s. Then they come with, which is nice, most car, which is oh, this other feature, they come with LED daytime ring headlights and LED headlights. Fun fact that started with the R8, the R8 kind of pioneered that, we'll get to that later, but nowadays all these new cars have these LED daytime ring lights, so it makes things so much more easier. So, other than that, it's a little sports car. It's bare minimum. It has two little cup holders, has the driver's side, passenger seat. No, uh, no space right here. Just a little trunk. Other than that, it's bare minimum. It has little radio, side airbags, has its little FM, AM, auxiliary Bluetooth with six speakers, which is not bad for a tiny little car like that. Other than that, that's all the regular stuff it has. You know? It has the little flip down windows, sorry mirrors and there's nothing really much to the car on the sport edition it's just you and the car it does come in two models it comes in the automatic and manual manual starts at 24915 automatic starts at 26395 as of today um, it does come with packages the Mazda MX-5 does come with packages so it has an interior package which is literally just a uh, oil cap alloy pedals you know cool little metal pedals door and door silk trim so just really nice trim across the car itself another package it has is the weather package which comes with a cargo tray all weather for and all weather formats that's literally it cargo tray goes in the trunk all weather formats so the nice big old rubbery uh, mats you get in a car that stops your car from getting dirty from mud dirt water anything then it comes with a appearance package which has Side still extensions, rear bumper, skirt, which is all black, door sim plates, and, and um, then it has an interior lighting kit, which just uh, at nighttime when you open the door, little white lights here at the feet, here at the door sill, open up, and when you close it, lights turn off. So it's kind of like the new uh, Z01. Other than that, the Sport doesn't really offer much. Whatever you pay for is what you get. There's, there's nothing much you can put on that car. Then we'll move on to the club. Literally has the same exact specs as before. The 155 horsepower with 144 pounds of torque. Two cylinder, sorry, two liter four cylinder car. And it just has more interior changes. So it comes, it starts this, this okay. The club starts with the Mazda infotainment system. Which actually is not that bad in my opinion comes with a big old seven inch screen. So in that car, a seven inch screen is actually fairly large. This one is what? This one in our Challenger. Uh, 8.4 inch screen in the Challengers. So, I mean, 
mean, it looked, I mean, it's like tablet sized. So, I yeah. mean, it's pretty decent. Size. And you have to keep in mind, like you said, the monsters are small, so. It, it's huge. It, for that kind of car, it's huge. And it has all the multi, multi-functional commander controls, right? So it has voice command, it has navy, it has like, no, sorry. It has voice command, has your internet radio. So like Pandora or Spotify or uh, any other internet slash, you know, internet radio service out there. It has blind spot monitoring rear, rear camera, has cross traffic camera, and then has black lips and accents. So that comes standard. While that was a package on the sport, this comes the little black lips here and there, you know, makes looks a little nicer, but standard. So between the club and the sport, there's not much of a difference. It's just interior, it's still a sports car. It's gonna be slightly more heavier, the curb weight. Other than that, it just comes with cooler stuff, which I I really wouldn't mind. You know what I'm saying it has it has better stuff. It, it makes it looks like more uh, high quality. Real quick, you said cross traffic cameras. Is it cameras or sensors? Sensors, sorry. Not That's, okay, cameras. yeah. Sensors, not cameras. Sensors. Apologize. And there are the manual starts at twenty six grand, and then sorry twenty five grand, and then the automatic starts at twenty seven grand. So just as of today. It can change, but as of today, that's what it was. And then we move on to the MX-5 Grand Touring. So it's like any other Grand Touring car. Same specs with the engine. Same same exact engine, same exact suspension, same exact everything. It's just the really nice version of the base model. So it comes with all, this, all the access to the outside. It looks beefier, it looks nicer, beefier, so to speak. Um, it comes with all the stuff the sports stuff came with, with the seven inch Navi and everything. And then, but it comes with a Bose sound system. That's Bose sound, Bose sound system, obviously is a huge upgrade from the stock Mazda sound system. It also comes with nine speakers rather than six. And then it comes with a really nice auto dimming mirror. It comes with the rain sensing windshield wipers. It comes with high beam control, which is the automatic high beam and all. It has lane departure warning system, which is also in much newer, like all, all recently, it comes in Mercedes. Even the Honda Odysseys have them. All these other Honda cars have them. As soon as you leave the lane, it detects it, starts beeping. You put it back in the lane. It still comes with the rear camera, the sensors for uh, cross traffic, and it comes with obviously daytime head lights. Everything, literally all the same. It's just nicer stuff on the inside, and all this, all the packages you can get for the other cars, it comes standard on this one. Fun fact about these, these MX-5s, they all come with a soft top. So they're all convertible, they're all soft top cars. So it comes to the switch, soft top goes down, soft top comes back up. Really simple. But let's say you don't want a soft top, you know, like a person like me, I really do not like soft top cars. Then you would gravitate towards the Miata RF, which is the same exact as the Miata, but it comes with a hard top. And, but those only come in two models. There's no Sport, it's only Club and Grand Touring. But you can still keep that car convertible. It's kind of like the uh, Corvettes, where it's still a hard top, but you can pop off the top panel, comes right off, you can put it to the side in your, in your garage or whatever, because it's not gonna fit in the car. And then you have, so to speak, a convertible, but it's not a soft top, where it, it's just so, like So one, it's not like the hard top that breaks up and then Heights down, no, you just uh, you like it's, pop it off, yeah, okay. like the Corvettes. Well, I mean, that's the kind of car I would go to. But keep in mind, only two miles on the RF, which is the Sport and the Grand Touring. Literally the same car, same specs, same all the packages you can get on those other cars, but just no soft top, which uh, I actually like. I like I like the RF a lot more. Now, keep in mind, this is like. Uh, This car is supposed to kind of replace the old school Miatas we know of, you know, the the older Miatas we, you and I grew up with that we still love. It was really nice, zippy cars, but you know, it's nicer looking. In my opinion, it still holds, it still holds up to the Miata standard, where obviously your car's slow. It's, it's not, it's not gonna be quick in a straight line, but it's quick. Let's say you live near where we live, where we have long, nice, windy country roads, that car's gonna be really, really fun. I can gun it as hard as I want to. Canyon driving. To, to an extent, to an extent, yeah. I, I, I can drive fast, hit some corners, and not worry about the car slipping, not worry about the car understeering, not worry about the car flipping. Yeah, yeah. there's something to be said about the Miatas that, that a lot of other cars can't say, whether no matter how fast or how 
performance they are. As the a lot of people will say the Miatas in, instill a bit of confidence in the driver that other cars will not. It doesn't make you afraid of the car, it doesn't make you afraid of the power. You're always aware that the tires will hold to the ground, that the suspension will keep you in place and that you can take these turns at higher speeds than you would other cars. Which is why if you take them through canyons and stuff, you can have just as much fun with a Miata as you would a V8 Challenger or a BMW or anything. Yeah. You would have just as much fun because with those many tight corners, you can't go fast anyway. And so it's all about can you hold the grip? And if you can go through corners faster, more safely, you'll have more fun than a car that can go faster theoretically. Yeah. Keep in mind though, it instills confidence. It doesn't necessarily make you a better driver, but it it kind of gives you an idea of what you should possibly do if you get into a fast vehicle. These obviously you won't be able to take sharp turns, like he said, with other cars that you can with the Miata, but it's still is really really fun. Like it basically it while it won't make you a better driver, if you pay attention, it'll make you it'll help you understand how a car should feel going around corners at speed, how a car should feel when it has good grip on the road, stuff like that. And if you pay attention to that and you remember that, when you get into more uh, powerful cars, faster cars, you'll start understanding understanding that a bit more when you're driving those cars. But that's taking the heart out of the Miata, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't, you don't want to, the whole point of the Miata is to be, is the traction and the suspension. It's not the speed. And so, you know, you have to keep that in mind when you're buying these cars. That's what you're buying for. And also affordable. It's a small car. It's a small two-person coupe. And so, I mean, that's what you're paying for. So they're cheaper. Like you said, 25000 to 27000 And that's what, you're, that's what your money's Except going to be. Except the Grand Touring. Grand Touring hits 30s. Yeah, but still even at 30s. Because um, even in 30s, when you're getting to other performance car brands, you're hitting... Um, you're hitting V6 cars. Yeah. And a lot of the V6 performance cars, like the V6 Mustangs and the V6 Camaros and stuff, they're nice, but they're not great. No. That, that, those aren't really worth the money. While the Miata at $30,000, I would say, is worth the money because, again, unless you're really trying to go for straight line quarter mile times, the Miata is perfect. Especially if you live in areas around California with a lot of canyons or... Um, Nevada or country roads that are winding through the mountains and stuff, the Miata would be perfect. So, I mean, you're, I feel like the Miata is a good value. You know, talking about the, our usual three-point system, value, comfort, performance. Yeah. Value, I think, is through the roof with the Miatas. Just yeah. because of what they offer. For how much? For how much and for what it is. Versus, you know, other cars that try and sell you on gimmicks. Um, so that's... That's kind of my thing. And then going to comfort with the convertible. Um, I personally don't mind the convertible in a car like that. That's a car I would go cruising through. Like like I said, through the canyons, through the mountains. Just go cruising with the soft top down. I think that'd be really fun. Yeah. Uh, and I wouldn't really see the benefit in paying the extra for the hard top. But, like I said, that's, pre that's preference. And he prefers the hard top. Yeah. But I think for a car like that, I would prefer the soft top. And it's just kind of a little more classical for that kind of a small size car. Um, and then again, performance. Really, the performance is all in the is all in the tires and the suspension and the tuning of it, rather than the raw power of the engine. So, but overall, I do think the Miatas are very nice cars. And uh, if you're looking, if you're into that kind of car, that that small car, um, I would go for it and it really I know there's a bit of a stigma of they look girly it's it's a girly car but just ignore that I mean I've seen where we live um, there's a dark red like burgundy Miata that is that has the smallest touch of camber in it but it's so little you can barely notice it unless you're really looking for it and the custom wheels and tires on it make it look just Meaner than any car I've seen on that road, um, outside of like blown out of the water uh, yeah. performance cars. 
and I think you can really make them look good. And when you're saving that much money with a $25,000 car, you have a bit extra to spend. If you had a $30,000 budget and you wanted the hard top, well, say you, instead of the hard top, you went to the soft top and you put that money into customizing it and making it look really nice. Yeah. So that's, so I'm a real big fan of the Miatas. Would I buy one if I had the excess money and I wanted something that because I have, I mean, a V8 Challenger, it's a fast car. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't take the Miata over this car. But at the end of the day, sometimes you kind of don't want to drive a car with this much power. Uh, especially rainy days or city, stuff like that. And I think if I had the money to spare, I would buy a Miata. And I would recommend the Miata over some of its similarly sized competitors yeah. such as the BMW Z series and the Fiat 128 Spider, which we will be talking about mm -hmm. uh, in the upcoming couple of months. Or the S2K. S2Ks. Um, stuff like that. So, overall, I think it's a good car. Yeah. And I think you should push aside any pre assumptions that you have of the car try it first uh, that's that's my take on it anything final no pretty much covered everything alrighty guys well thank you so much for watching episode 8 of 100 cc's um, the July video for cars and coffee should have come out by now um, once again there will be no video for cars and coffees in August uh, as we will not be able to attend the July show, uh, we film these a month in a, a month in advance. Uh, so, but around that time, mid month, we'll try and put on maybe some supplemental content, something else. And uh, we have some plans to do a little bit more in depth with this car, and you will hear more about that later on. So, but until then, thank you so much for watching. Keep your hands on 10 and 2, strive safe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.